This film is brought to you by the generous sponsorship of the Australian Hotels Association, South Australia. There are many problems with the culture of Adelaide now, and you listen to Adelaide radio playlists, they play stuff, you know, like even though they say they play stuff from now, they play, they do not play any, uh, very, very little Australian product. The stuff that they do play is 30 years old. Um, this doesn't happen in Melbourne, it doesn't happen in Sydney. A report into the future of live music in South Australia has called for licensing restrictions to be relaxed. The report says a healthy music scene is being stifled by regulation and increasing costs. The live music scene in Adelaide may be alive and well, but it's being stifled by red tape, according to Thinker in Residence Martin Elborn. His report recommends amending the Liquor Licensing Act to remove the needs test for new venues and conditions on what entertainment can be provided. And they're quite hard places to make run at a profit, so it's just anything that makes the the costs and the hassle of running it you know, worse is not is not a good thing. You know, personally we felt frustrated with the limitations that bands have and musicians have being based out of Adelaide. So definitely now there's there's been a acknowledgement that there is limitations. The report has also called for a more flexible approach to the new late night trading code so smaller venues can afford to meet safety requirements after midnight. There's no doubt these are big and controversial issues, but we'll grapple with the report. I think it's a great report and it's got a number of really sensible recommendations. The report also focuses on developing the local music industry, including an advisory council, more investment in music education and dedicated live entertainment districts, including at Port Adelaide. Industry professionals believe the wide-ranging recommendations are needed. It just can't be um, one specific area of, of the industry that needs change. I think the whole thing needs to change together. The organisation that represents the hotels is sceptical of some aspects of the report, but can see at least one positive. Some of the, the suggestions I think have probably missed the mark, but one we would definitely support, that is the removal of the requirement to have entertainment consent. Uh, that, that's become a bureaucratic red tape. The report also suggests better collaboration between the music industry, police, the liquor and gambling commissioner and local councils. Candice Smarthus, ABC News, Adelaide. My name's Jethro. I'm a videographer and I've been working with musicians and artists of all kinds for over 20 years. So when I heard about the Thinker in Residence report into rejuvenating the live music scene in South Australia, I wanted to know more and I knew just the guy to start with. The state government has released uh, this report on uh, the revitalisation of the live music scene here in South Australia. Yeah. What exactly is the problem? Well, I think they bought the Thinker in Residence in Martin Elborn for, um, because there was, there, was dis, there, there was a lot of distrust at the time about who was going to in, in, enliven the city again and how they were going to do that. And so they brought someone in to have a look at what happens overseas, etc., and you know, his experience with a lot of the festivals that he runs overseas. Well, what was wrong with the, uh, the scene that, that uh, prompted the yeah. government to commission this report in the first place? I think it came from the artists themselves, the musicians themselves, who were finding they didn't have enough work, they didn't have enough respectable work, and they didn't really get paid well enough either. That was one of the problems. I've just been to, to Memphis and Nashville and New Orleans, and a lot of those streets and the parts of the blocks are actually closed off. So people can wander down the street, go to any club that they have there, easily just walk in, watch what's going on. And the other thing that they have, because their culture is so strong, is that most of the venues in those towns that I'm talking about have PAs and lights and production in every In house. Venue, in house. So that bands can come in, set up, play. Um, it's not only convenient, but it's also showing some respect for the music. And one of the disappointments here, and I think we're slowly starting to see this 
evolve, and I know the AHA is interested in in curing this in a sense, is um, is that over the years, pubs have sort of forgotten about the live music scene. They put you on, but they put you on in the corner. Go, yeah, play over there, and often you have to move the tables and chairs first as well to set up. And so that respect's gone. Why did we go and see the Beatles, the Kinks, the Stones, Bon Jovi? None of us had seen them live. We all heard them on radio. And we loved them because of that. We grew to love them because radio played them. So that's why we support them, and that's why we went to see them. And the same thing can happen here if they give us the support. I spotted music photographer Bruce Weir. Now he's seen more gigs than I've had hot breakfasts, so I thought I'd ask him what he thought of the South Australian live music scene. It is just so radically different now uh, when it comes to live music as to what it was, say, 30 years ago. Do you think it's better or worse? No, it's worse. It's, it's not vibrant. It's not, it's not pulsating. There is not the originality um, in music, I think, I don't know how one creates a renaissance in art, but there needs to be a renaissance in music. Um, what are your biggest concerns when you're booking live acts? What goes through your mind first? Uh, who they are, what they, you know, if they're, I guess, Backyard Wonders or Weekend Warriors that, you know, only, uh, I guess, play on the weekend and not, uh, yeah, we... and it's not their full-time job. Um, and, you know, to book bands, we look at, you know, where they played before, uh, if it's covers or if it's their their own uh, their own stuff, then, you know, that's, that's a big factor. In what Do you find the cover bands attract more um, audience than original bands? Oh, uh, yes and no. It depends, depends what your hotel's targeting. You yeah. know, if, if you're a venue that do covers, then, uh, you know, we're known for, for homegrown um, original acts. Uh, you know, they do throw in a cover here and there, but majority or if not 90%, 95% is all their own music, so. Oh, Social networking makes a big difference. It's huge. Social media is just is massive, and um, you know it, it works both sides of the um, bar. You know they they got to push their brand uh, to keep playing here. If they're not drawing a crowd, you know we do our best through social media and, and advertise means. But if if they bring their crowd through social media and, and pushing their, their stuff, then yeah, absolutely it needs to work. <laughs> in your venue has any effect whatsoever on their ability to put live music on? No, not at all. If you haven't been here before, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we do at the Blues Lounge. Every Tuesday night we have a jam night, we don't have a house band, everybody gets up to play. Tonight we've had 50 musicians. If you want to put your name down, come and see me, everyone gets a chance to play. Thank you very much.
Hotel lives off of live music. Uh, we have live music five days a week, and it's probably 70 to 80% of our revenue. Without live music, this hotel, being a heritage hotel, would probably be closed. Uh, so it's extremely important. We get a lot of young people, a lot of old people. It's a mixture of many different cultures. We play different music um, from blues to rock and roll. What do you think the artists can do to assist the venue with the gig being successful? It's a lot different from what it was when I first started. Um, when I first started, we used to do the advertising and uh, paper, radio, uh, posters. These days, it's all electronic media. It's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, these are the things that are, uh, that bring crowds in, and the only way you can get a crowd in these days is the band and the band's friends and uh, the people that follow their music uh, have to be made aware, and the only way they can do that and guarantee you're targeting the right market is to um, use Facebook and Twitter and those sort of things. Hmm. Tell me, how long have you been a uh, working musician? Um, 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 I can't remember, mate. It's, I think I was 17, 16, working part-time on and off. So that's, uh, what am I now, 37, uh, 57, 62. <laughs> what, what does the live music scene in South Australia compare to when you first started, how it is now? It was huge when I was starting back in the sort of late 60s. There was this massive blues scene and there was also this massive scene of original bands and uh, it was just bands everywhere and you get two or three nights. But I've just got a feeling it's coming back to that at the moment. I, I reckon there's more music around here now than what there was years ago and there's some great musicians in this town. You know? So you wouldn't consider that the state of play for musicians here in South Australia is particularly in danger at the moment? I don't know about in danger, it's in danger of nobody ever getting paid ever again. <laughs> well, you speaking know, of that... Well, a lot of people are doing a lot of stuff for not very much or no money. Well, speaking know. of that, I've heard it said that musicians these days are playing for less money than they did 20 years ago. Oh, I'd say so, yeah. yeah. There's no big corporate gigs, not as many anymore. Certainly, I don't get it. But um, I, I would say that that's, that's true. I mean, a lot of us, we, we play... And open mic nights, knowingly and happily because we enjoy it. But you don't get paid, the host bands get paid. But you meet a great array of musicians. Mm. You, everybody in my band, I've met an open mic night. Do you think it's possible to actually make a living as a uh, musician in South Australia? A few people do, for sure. But they're very, very good world-class musicians. Make no mistake about that. Yeah. You know, there are some great musicians in this town. They have to work damn hard every night of the week to make some money, you know, but they can do it. What would be your advice to the next generation? Well, from the wise old sage, I don't know, just work hard, uh, practice hard. Um, yeah, um, just be dedicated. And, and play with other guys at your own standard or a little bit better. You know, Same get... principle as playing billiards. If you want to get better, you play someone better than you. Exactly, yes. Yeah. It is exactly that, Jethro. You, you've got to play with better guys, then you become the better guy. Yeah. Because you've got to. 
Um, so if you can sneak your way into that, that's a great way of doing it. You learn from those guys. Go to open mic nights. Watch all the really good guys play because everybody in this town that's a good musician turns up at an open mic night. Yeah, right. You know, at various places around town. Do you think pokies have had an effect on live music in South Australia? Oh, the pokies. Well, they were going to be our saviour, weren't they? They were going to be work for musicians. We're all going to work. Every place is going to need entertainment. Um, I'm not quite sure what happened to that. Um, I, I do think that... I don't know, I could be dreaming, but I think that, that maybe it is swinging back that people are tired of being taken to the cleaners by the pokies. Um, and, and even if you just do pokies for entertainment, it's not that entertaining. And when you can go and watch great musicians, good musicians, even beginning musicians, you know, that, that might become great one day. At least it's live, organic, and much more fun than just going sticking money into a poker machine. <laughs> The Blues Lounge is an open mic night and it's run in a very democratic fashion. Absolutely anybody can have a go and apparently that even includes the publican. think that uh, patrons are willing to pay for live performance? They, they are and they're not. It depends on the live performance. Um, we charge $5 on a Friday night and $5 on a Sunday for live music and it usually involves multiple bands. This helps offset the cost for the, for the young people because they have costs in, in setting up um, and uh, it helps the, the, the hotel um, meet its commitments as well. Mm. Um, Five dollars is not a lot of money, but if you've got fifty or sixty people, it goes a long way to you know paying the five or six hundred dollars that the bands require just to be able to play. Um, if you charge more than that in a venue like this, it's got to be a, a more mainstream act, uh, an act that's got a large following or it's been around for a long time, and uh, we've got an act happening in a couple of weeks' time, a punk rock show, and it's twenty dollars a ticket, but, uh, and that was sold out. Mm. So, you know, it, so it, it depends uh, purely and simply on the kind of music. Mm. Pokies have a um, impact on the live music scene at all? Pokies do have an impact on live music, um, but not as much as they used to. Uh, when they first came out, they definitely did. Um, hoteliers uh, focused their resources to that, that area because it was an immature market, but now it's a mature market. Pokey revenue is flatlined, and in fact in some cases decreased. You're finding more and more venues are now looking to music to boost their revenue, to make it um, a more happening thing, and to get people back in to use their pokies. So um, uh, I would say live music um, is on the upswing, but 
not live bands, live duos, live single acts. Uh, the bands and those sort of things will happen maybe later down the track, but not in the first instance. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming tonight. We can't do this without you guys supporting it. This has been another fantastic night. Uh, we've had over 45, probably 50 musicians here tonight that just got up and jammed, plus our normal punters and all our beautiful ladies. So this is the Blues Lounge. We do this every Tuesday night. Yeah! Woo! If you want to hear, yeah, thank you very much. If you want to come along, we're here every Tuesday. Bring your friends down. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger every week. This is, without a doubt, the best blues party in town. Thank you. This used to be a hotel that was known for live music. Yes. And you no longer can play, can have live music? Our licence has been restricted to the point where it's not really that uh, plausible or possible to do live music in, a, in the way that it was in the past. Yeah. Um, there are conditions relating to uh, events which obviously happened during the time when it was a large live music venue that have limited music on certain nights of the week, mm. specifies areas which I can and can't have bands and also conditions to do with noise and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, there are also quite a few ridiculous, well not ridiculous, but um, over the top security measures which are required when I have live music on, which means that for our hotel, even just to have a little band in the corner there, I have to have three licensed security guards on for the last two hours of the night. One of them would be patrolling the areas around the hotel, which my lawyers have told me anyway that, that that's ridiculous anyway because it's off our property and so therefore there's a whole lot of issues to do with that. Uh, that's extraordinary. Yeah. So there still is a market for live music in Adelaide? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think people, a lot of people come in asking if we still do live music, you know, pubs that ask for pubs that do do live music and that sort of thing. Mm. Um, for me, I suppose it really just depends on the venue. It's something that I definitely look into. These days, we're running this venue more as a restaurant -y sort of pub, so um, it's probably not something that I would jump right into, but if I was able to, it's definitely worth considering. Do you think that pokies have had an impact on live music? Um, personally, I probably haven't been in the industry long enough to... While I've been around the industry, pokies have always been around, and I suppose the live music always um, has probably been on the decline in the city anyway. Um, pokies uh, can be an easy way to make a quick buck and cover some costs that are, you know, keep rising in other areas. When you're booking an act, what's your biggest concern? First considerations. Um, how much it's going to be and how much we're going to turn over over the bar. So, so how much their fee will be. Yeah, and whether they're going to have a following and whether their following is going to put money in the till to, to make it viable. Just marketing? Um, mainly, we rely on, on the fans themselves for performing themselves to the marketing. But if, we, if we're paying for someone to perform, do a gig, uh, we're kind of relying on them to bring people in. One, two, three, four. Come on.
are willing to pay for live performance? Uh, it depends on the venue and... It... Well, in your case here? Here, I don't think so. I don't think we can charge a cover charge. Um, but if we built up a regular, whether it be Friday night or a Saturday night or a Sunday gig, um, and build up that reputation, then we can get a following. Yeah. Um, but again, that just costs money to do that and build up that reputation. Yeah. Yeah. Another jam session takes place on Monday nights at the Grace Emily Hotel. Billy Bob's Barbecue Jam has been a city institution for nearly 14 years and the talent is diverse and of a high standard. The Semaphore Workers Club is by no means a mainstream music venue, but it does serve up incredible talent.
what's your perception of the state of South Australian live music these days? I think it's actually in the same state it's always been. Um, people have just got to look hard to find a gig, and when you get a gig, you make the best out of it and play well, and uh, it's not so easy to find gigs. There's not so many around, but if you can't find one, you go and make one. Um, so I think you know, maybe a bit more a different emphasis on people going out because they used to go out in groups and go out specifically to hear music. Now they go and do other things and they've got their home entertainment and everything. Mm. People go out about poker machines, a lot of it's home entertainment. But at the end of the day, when people go to a gig, they do the same thing. They drink, they socialise, they dance and they have a good time. That never changes. Mm. <laughs> It's been said that musicians these days are working for less money than they did 20 years ago. Do you find that to be the case for yourself? Oh yeah, I want to pay me what they paid me 20 years ago. Sometimes they want to pay me less, and other times I get good pay. When you get good pay, you take it and you're grateful for it. When they get off a bad pay, you say you either draw the line and say, no, I'm not going to work for underpay or it does everybody else a disservice, or you go and play for nothing if it's a charity thing, and otherwise reserve the right to either pay for my proper pay or play for nothing, but, but mm. certainly not. Uh, you know, don't undercut someone because it affects everybody that way. It doesn't do anyone any good. You touched on pokey machines. Do you think that they have a uh, impact on the live music scene? Well, people go on about it a lot. I think they did have an impact when they first came in, but I don't think it's as, as gigantic. I, I think other forms of social media will probably have more impact. They never get mentioned. <laughs> For the next generation coming through, do you have any advice for them? Yes, do what you believe in, listen to other people's music. There's a spate of cover bands now, a lot of monkey see, monkey do. If you're going to do someone else's music, put your own tag on it. By all means, learn it because that's part of a skill in itself. But, to, you know, get together with your friends, find places to do gigs if you can't find a pub that will put you on. And uh, you've got the best networking systems in the world now, far greater than when I was a teenager. Use everything you've got, but never forget eye, eye contact and personal touch. Got Gail and uh, Liz, they should be here. Um, we're going to blow the roof off this door tonight. I know it. Sophia, you're a classically trained musician, graduate of the Conservatorium of Music, work in many bands, and you're an elected member on the Council of Norwood, Paynham and St Peter's. How do you view the state of play in live music in South Australia? Actually, I think there's some amazing stuff out there. We have a lot of great creativity going on. It's just a question of going to find it. It's not as easy to find these days. <laughs>
role do you think that local government can play in the future of live music in South Australia? I think there's a lot that local government can do because live music is something that adds to the economy of our local communities and councils these days are not just about roads, rates and rubbish, they're actually about building our communities and building the local economies and live music is a big part of that. So we can promote that in our local economic development plans. We can actually find out where the bands are playing and we can make sure that the community knows about that on a larger scale. Uh, councils always put on public events as well and I think we can do a lot more in promoting the bands that we have at our public events. What advice would you give to the next generation coming through? I would say if you've got music in your heart, you should go for it. There are places to play, there are ways to be a musician in this town and don't let anyone put you off because live music is so important for us all. Musicians are one of the few professions that doesn't have superannuation, income protection or even a health plan. So what happens when it all goes wrong and the hospital bills are piling up? The heart and hand of Australia's music industry, Support Act Limited, holds monthly lunches to raise funds for musicians in need. I think it's a fantastic organisation. It, uh... You know, the, the fact that uh, a lot of the people that work in the industry, they don't get the big plaudits and they don't get the big, uh, to be on the big stage. There's so many people involved in the industry that, uh, that have been so valuable and to be able to help them out and, uh, and, and get, some, get some money in their pockets and have functions like this where people get together, it's, uh, it's just a, a credit to the music industry. Good afternoon, Devin Welcome along to another monthly little piss-up. And for those that don't stay after this, you wouldn't know what the piss up was, so welcome to lunch. Anyway, the story is, I met this girl and she'd come to Adelaide to live with me and we thought we'd take her across to Melbourne and I would meet the mum and dad. You know, the, the very big first meet of the mum and dad. And that was to be the next day. And you know that wonderful paper, The Truth? Oh, Sunday Observer, it was Yeah, The Truth. Sunday Observer. No, I th I'm sure it was The Truth. Okay. It was one of those dirty mags anyway. Yeah, yeah. So when I got to the house to meet Mr. and Mrs. Rass, I think the name was, yeah. front page, you and I laying in the corner with headlines, drunken debauchery at King of Pop Party. Wild's performance marred the prestigious evening. Yes. International guests had to be apologised to by industry leaders. Yes. Uh, and that's uh, do, you the, do you want the kicker on this? Yeah. That photo taken then of us lying on the couch was published in a, well, it might have just been me, they might have removed you yeah. in, the, uh, in, in the coroner's wagon uh, later on that evening, but there was a photograph published of me uh, about five years later in an associated publication. It was a file photo by then, uh, and it was about an article on glue sniffing in the suburbs. <laughs> we'll dedicate this... Uh... A uh, little uh, performance of three songs for, uh, to uh, our good mate Doc Neeson too, who's struggling. So what do we do?
seen there's still plenty of live music left in South Australia and it can sometimes be very difficult to make a living as a professional musician. But the future of South Australia's live music scene lies with you. That's right, you, the audience, the most important element in this equation. Vote with your feet, get up off the couch, go out, find some live music and you can decide the future. <laughs> 